Hello and welcome to episode 10, almost 20% in for this project. And uh, today I will show you a photo from a snowstorm or snow blizzard uh, that came last week on Tuesday here. It fell like uh, 30 centimeters uh, that day and uh, this is a photo on my way home from the train station, from my way home from work. And um, it's a spot that I've uh, passed by like three and a half or four years now. It's a spot um, or a composition I, I've been looking at, especially on early spring mornings when the sun coming, d coming in and, uh, and there's some mist around the, um, the trees on the ground. I've been... Um, searching for the the right moment or the right day to capture this uh, this place and this uh, trees it's birch trees i think you say they are very beautiful but the thing i've seen uh, before at the spring or at autumn or summer when it's much more clear the foreground or uh, just in front of the of the trees it's not so nice. It, it's very busy and very. Um, the birch, uh, the birch trees are are really be beautiful here. Uh, they are very white and um, like a perfect birch. Uh, and I want to to get that stillness or or that um, that clean look from the the white the white tree uh, and. If I have that foreground or or that bushes just in front of the trees, I can't get that that uh, that look I want. Even if the mist is uh, up on the early spring or early autumn uh, mornings, it's hard to get uh, the photo from my my brain or my vision to the to the actual spot. But <laughs> when I passed by here on my way home from the train. I just had to um, to put my bicycle in the snow and then I took some step out on the grass field and um, and picked up my Lekia. Uh, I needed to handle fast because of the snow, it was really heavy as you see and uh, I adjusted the settings in the backpack just to protect the, the camera because it's not weather sealed or weather probed and the Voigtlander lens I don't know how how good it handles the the big snowflakes either but uh, I it's been out before in the in the rain or in the snowfall so it can handle it can handle tough con conditions but uh, to protect it as much as possible I I, I adjusted the settings in the um, in the backpack and then I took this and uh, and uh, continued my my way home when I saw this I come to think about a locution I think you say locution uh, it's a way you, you describe a metaphor with words you can say I think locution is the right word in English but uh, here in Sweden I don't know if this is common outside Sweden but here in Sweden we can say du ser inte skogen för alla träden and that means you don't see the forest because of the trees and this photo takes that location locution or how you how you pronounce it uh, it takes it even one more step because here you can say you don't see the trees because of the snowflakes and the meaning of this is you you focus too much on the on the details so you can't see the the whole frame you can't see yeah the whole forest you just focus on the the trees instead of the the whole forest uh, and this takes it even further that you you can't see the the small details because you in my brain for this project I mean pixel peeping and the snowflakes is meant to be the pixels uh, of photography or of, of digital sensors and I've been thinking about what I will talk about this week and uh, I think 
<laughs> I just came up with this idea when I when I saw the photo today that uh, it's kind of a perfect subject uh, this photo holds that you can't see the whole deal the whole photography the whole meaning of photography because you just focus on the on the pixels or on the megapixels or or the um, the technical specifications of photography from today uh, manufacturers just releases new cameras new sensors more megapixels Fuji just went from 26.3 megapixel, I think, on the X Trans 4 sensor to 40 megapixel on a small, tiny APS-C camera. I don't really see the meaning of that, but uh, I guess it fills some purpose. <laughs> I, I, I think they need to to um, give something to the people that buy Sony's or Nikon's or Canon today that has full frame. Um, but I think, I think we need to take a step back and focus on the most essential in, in photography or in making art in general and, and see what we need and not what we can get. Because what we can get, that's just, um, that's just a limit for the manufacturers. That's just a, a thing for them to be able to to promote their new toy or new tool uh, to the consumers and to do that they need to improve something over the last generation like phones or whatnot and because of that they improve the dynamic range they improve the megapixels they improve the yeah everything and if we go back like five years how much in the end result does those five or seven years of improvements make to the final result? If you know your gear, I think you're good enough to get the same amount of quality from your photos on a camera from 2015 or 2018 compared to a camera released yesterday i know there are some um, some genres that uh, that needs autofocus to to get the to get the more higher frequent of good photos but uh, i'm sure with even slow focus you can get some good photos and you don't need thousand good photos you need five ten good photos from a session so i thought this uh, photo it's really messy and uh, I have never thought about uh, about this this scene in this way uh, because I was too locked to see the photo with the mist or or the s the morning sun coming down on it. So I I couldn't see the whole frame <laughs> like the. That the location or how you pronounce that word <laughs> it's much easier in Swedish it's at least for me that's the photo I just want to show some other photos from from this week uh, and the one I have in mind is a dog that I took photo of and it was so cute when I left the train uh, just before I took this photo that I showing you right now uh, the dog was, it had long hair, long brownish hair and it looked at me with a face covered in snow or the, the fur was covered in snow and it was so cute so I, I just had to place my bike um, on, the, <laughs> on the train station and ask, uh, ask the owner if I could take a photo of her dog and uh, she said yes and laughed and we talked a little bit about it and um, I took some photos but uh, but this photo I show you, it's, it was the best I got. I took three photos in total. But the dog was so curious and uh, every time it looked straight at me, it just walked, walked in front of me and sniffed on my camera or sniffed on my bag or anything like that. So I couldn't get that, uh, that first 
that first vision I had in my head, uh, like a, just a front portrait of the dog. Uh, but I think I think this is nice as well. It's uh, it's so cute, and yeah. And with that said, I want to thank you for this week.